then. Huh. You're out of breath. <laughs> what the heck is this? What? A, a mustard packet? It's funny. It's, I was I, I, I was I, talking to Morris about how I had crust under my fingernails. It's it's that mustard. And you know, I love I love mustard, but I'm giving it up. I can't deal with this this crust under my nails. I I have to You're yeah. I'm just cleaning and I'm cleaning and and I'm rubbing my fingers raw. I practically I practically <laughs> bleeding over here because of these mustard packets. <laughs> mustard in general. I I hate I hate to stop you, but yeah, I had this just this bugaboo in my back hip. And, hmm. and it was it was this stupid packet when it I is sat, stupid. when I sat down and yeah. it, it jolted up me, but so I I I, I apologize, but you might have to recap it's with just, me. Um, because I'm I'm just getting settled in <laughs> while well, I was oh, cooking dinner. My, uh, my arm, my arm. It's a, mm. it's an arm, and it's not that bad. What is this news of you being done with mustard? That sounds extreme. And, well, and you know, you I, know, you know about the trance, right? You know, we've been doing that. Tr- that trance thing over here and uh and so i've been i've been doing the mustard packets and i mean and i can't have i can't do the trance accurately with dirty nails so so one's got to go and it's not going to be the trans latin i am gonna have to ixnay the mustard Mustard gets deep down into the nooks and cracks and crannies of your fingers. It does. Yeah. It is one of those and it stains. Another food that does that exact same thing is the chicken wing. And I mm-hmm. love me some chicken wings. I don't uh, like their their size and how you they know, should I think they should be smaller, like gummy bear size. I want a small like, wing from a big bird. And I don't know if that's out there. The, the meat is different. Well, you, got, you, you got a big oh. bird and you got a small wing. You're getting a flavor that is, uh, that's a punch in the mouth. Well, you're right in my area, though. I'm thinking, like, if you have a gummy bear-sized chicken infused yeah. with, like, blue cheese and buffalo sauce... But the chicken, if the chicken is this big and you can just pop them, I mean, you're going to avoid all that finger. My, I mean, you know me, I watch the CFL and yeah. all that Canadian league. Doug Flutie is one of my my favorites of all time. But He's a beautiful man. And He's I wake pretty. up Monday mornings and my fingernails are just riddled with orange sauce. I mean, I'm, I'm pooping wing sauce. I'm sweating wing sauce. Um, you know, I, I'm in the shower, I'm doing my hair, I can smell wing sauce. So, I mean, mustard gets in your, in, yeah. in, in your craw, wing sauce gets in your craw. And sometimes that, that wing sauce, an ingredient is the mustard. Um, so, you know, double, a double punch there. And well, you know, with Doug Flutie, he had such a good arm back then. 49 and, in the air. Yeah. 49 in the air. And it was, uh, it was an amazing throw. Uh, he was known. He was known for his throwing ability. He was known for his condiments, and uh, he he's, actually, he got me into mustard. Well, no, and 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 the screwy thing about that when he was uh, quarterbacking for the Buffalo Bills, he actually and and I believe the sauces. He I mean he owns a barbecue sauce factory out of upstate New York. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and, it's it, to work there is a privilege. Well, well I yeah. I believe it's still open. Looking at what I'm seeing here, I gotta, I gotta get you some money. You wrote all those letters to Godfrey. Uh, you've been you've been handling 
Theo. I mean, in, Theo is is difficult anyway, even if he is the caretaker. Well, he's a continent away, and I tell you what, that really yeah that makes it easier. But yeah, I no, I yeah. I mean, when when you're him. when you're paying with with money orders all the time, that is that is a pain in the neck. Cause yeah, he I've, I've been at for you. I've been I've been at the post office filling out these these money orders and I tell Absolutely. you what my arms ache and you know and I haven't seen that Burger King sweater for some time you know I, I noticed you had it on that's a that's a classic and it's not uh, it's not too cheap well it's not like their food anyway it's, well yeah no I know and, it went, and Dad's working there again so yeah yeah. yeah. So I mean, it's a I little. I just transferred that, by the way, just now. Oh, to my yeah, yeah. Um, to my PayPal. It's good to hear that your dad's working again. Um, he uh, he really needs the money. Um, but we got scammed. I mean, he was one of those one of those elders that got. Freaking scammed. I mean, sent yeah. like twenty three thousand dollars over to Switzerland. Like they need more money. Yeah. Jesus Christ. We're living high on the hog, and here we are writing poetry, getting pennies. You know, I don't get it, but it sucks because I, I'm, I'm about dead at work. I'm, I'm so overtired because I've been up all night writing poetry, and I mean, it's, it's getting old. It's getting old, and it should. Problem is, is, you know, you write such beautiful, beautiful poetry, and and you're not getting recognized for it. Uh, and it's such a sea of poetry out there that it's hard to pick out the good ones. And you, you are one of them. Should we do some flash poetry? Flash poetry is is my is my angle. Right about now, the earth beckons us to call for a cloven mane. I see no recourse and feel no scripture. Synergy lost to the void. Half days turn into whole nights, full of sweat and dreams. Dreams longer and louder than the songs. No one turns my look. Hazy moons bring harlot barks into this world. Waking in the husk of the love. The mercenary whispers into the ear of a pedal boy, canned, studded, cloak and dagger. Death be the horrors of this bed. I want to put one of these these pretzel trees in my yard, and you know, so I can eat it because I like pretzels. Whoa. Whoa! Wait a minute. The Rick Dwayne Johnson. Yeah, he's, you know, probably going to be president someday. And he probably thinks he's doing everybody a freaking favor planting them in these poor neighborhoods. But, you know, the thing about it is, is we're paying for it. Taxpayers. The Rick, I want one. Dwayne Johnson. He's behind that. He, he's well, he's essentially a figurehead for the movement, you know, and they have these the, the independent contractors, uh, you know, that the government you know, is buying this from the, the company that built it, you know, that invented this pretzel tree. And so they pretty much cornered the market. It's a monopoly. And and we're not allowed in, in on it. Well, I tell you what, like you had said, I'm really sick and tired because as a tax paying citizen, I should have a pretzel tree. I'm sorry. I don't give a shit. Right, right. I love pretzels and we're paying for it. And I got to fight for that. It don't make any sense. If and they're giving... I don't know what the per capita is. If they're giving two per person, I should have at least six or seven on my property. Yeah, well, exactly. You should have excess amount if you're spending your money on it. But that's the problem. They're not even letting you spend your money on it unless you're buying it for, you know, those people with a certain income bracket. And, you know, I'm sure the Rick isn't aware of all the nuances, you know, behind the dealings and stuff. Some of those and it's a revolving door. Some of those people in that in that company, they used to work for the government. I mean, it's just a, it's just the pretzel industrial complex all over again here, right here, right here by the bog. And that and that bog, you know, used to be a beautiful place. But th that's the thing with these pretzel trees is they they take a lot of water. And that bog is about about all dried up.
amateur practitioners of trans Latin. What? You know, that organization where, you know, we go into a trance like aura state and we're speaking a Latin uh, and it soothes the soul. We've it's talked the about depths. We've talked You're about choices. I mean, it's it's no one's twisting your arm. It's barbecue sauce and it's mustard. No There's two things. Arm. And I tell you what, the proof's in the mustard. Bringing them in. Coming into our existence. I've embraced it. The first time that I conjured a demon, I uh, I placed olive oil into my palm. I put sage into my palm. And my mistake, I had kosher salt, mm. sage, mm. olive oil, and then I put cayenne pepper. And that was the mistake because rookie, rookie mistake. I, as I started to do, I said the words, Ixne on the lane. Eternal damnation or eternal hell or eternal life. I mean, what are you going to choose, really? And it's been such a good ride for me. Yes, I know, because we went to that uh, that same event together, and I've, I've been practicing it, too. And I've actually, I've had my, my sleep has been disrupted. Um, my eating habits are different. My toileting habits are different. Um, I've been messing around with a false idol and i think i actually might be getting in a little too deep but i like it <laughs> oh. Oh. mustard stains oh you could drug into that freaking realm that that you just it once you're in are you coming? You don't even know. I mean, people are lost. People disappear. I, it's real. I tell you what, I've been in the realm. All I smell is mustard. You soak in the mustard. You become a walking dog. Come, Mr. Tally, man. Tally, the, uh, yeah. it's a good song, you know, and I should have reflected a little further on that. We'll do that station wagon baggage. We'll, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll yeah. We we'll, we'll, we'll should try that in, in our, when we're in the trance state. Uh, it's and, you know, trans Latin is is a state of mind where you know it, it's pretty demonic, but it feels right and it feels good, and uh, I like it that you know you come with me on those journeys, and you know we don't really don't see each other when we're in the trance, but it we feel that we can feel our presence there, uh, that you know you get to see me get my, that whipped the whipping, and you the, swallowed your tongue. Uh, you spoke to Jackie Gleason. I mean, what the hell am I supposed to do? Yeah, that's a pretty tall order, and you, you can't stand up to that, uh, to the moon, you know. He, he even said that to you, to the moon. He's a funny guy, even in hell. <laughs>